Hi, I'm Simon Lappert. I am from Basel, but I just moved to Zurich like six weeks ago or so, so still accommodating there. And I write poetry and fiction. So by the end of this summer, um, my second novel will come out at Diogenes Verlag in Zurich. And I'm also working on a, a poetry book, which will hopefully be published um, this fall at Hochrot München. Um, I've been a curator for Babelsprech International. Um, maybe some people will know this project. Um, we've done it for five years almost, um, and it was all about connecting um, poets all over Europe and give them a stage and give them the opportunity to meet and connect and translate and get into a dialogue. Um, which I think was especially very important for Switzerland because Switzerland has a very small and kind of a very hidden poetry scene. So the project did a lot for us um, to meet each other and actually know who the others are. Something that I um, experienced um, also in, in the German part of Switzerland and sometimes in Germany, but especially in Switzerland, is that when I talk to writers or readers or teachers or students, um, they often tell me that they're somehow scared of poetry because they have the feeling that it locks them out somehow or they don't understand it. And I think that what we don't understand, it, like, um, it, uh, it disturbs us. We want to know, we want to, we want to understand things. And I think this is a really nice thing about poetry because I don't think that art or especially poetry has um, the purpose to, to calm us down. It's, it's exactly the other way around and I think that um, we can learn a lot of poetry and artworks especially um, about being open-minded and about understanding, not understanding as something good and, and welcome. I'm mostly writing in German, uh, well in high German, because what I talk during the day is Swiss German. So German is, is a foreign language actually for us, the high German, the written German. So this is one speciality about Switzerland that we um, don't have an actual grammar for Swiss German. And the language we use in school and um, to write things is always high German. So there's, there's already a, a little gap there, which I find very interesting because sometimes I end up with a word I want to use and it doesn't really exist in high German. So I go back and write it in Swiss German. But there I don't have a grammar. So um, it's a, a nice way of being free. I do not only write with my eyes, but a lot with my ears and of course also with the nose and the tongue and, and the skin. So the senses are very um, important for me, but especially the sound, because I think it's not only the, the meaning of a word um, that is interesting and useful to, to create a poem and a sound, but also the, the sound of it. Like if, if you have a word um, like krachen, in Swiss German it's krache, in French it's krack, and in English it's crack. So I found this very interesting to, to play with this and see um, where there are similarities and where there are like huge gaps and you have to come up with something else because it's not transportable. So this was very interesting for me here. Als ob da im Dunkeln was umkippt, hinter dem Brustbein und beim Atmen verschüttet. Jetzt, wo die Luft so kühl und die Blicke der anderen so zugefenstert. Als ob da was scheuert und knotet. Als ob die Ellbogen einwärts knicken und durch die Rippen nach innen wachsen. Als ob auch die Hände einwärts ästeln. Als ob da ein Wald unter der Zunge, ein blättriger Störton im Hals. Und dann das Krachen der Äste hinter den Augen, die zunehmende Vermosung der Gedanken. Bis da außen 
einen Wald ums Bett. Und innen die Fäuste im Rippentresor. As if in the dark, something falls over behind the breastbone and spills while breathing. Now that the air is so cool and the looks of the others so windowed. As if something chafes and knots, ripschet und knüppelt. As if the elbows bend inwards and grow through the ribs. As if also the hands would branch inside. As if there is a forest under the tongue, a leafy disturbing tone in the throat. And then the cracking of the branches behind the eyes, puis les branches qui craquent derrière les yeux, and then das Krachen von der Äste hinter den Augen. Until outside there is a forest around the bed, and inside the fists in the rip safe.